Welcome everyone to another Photoshop editing tutorial. This video is about creating another dark moody landscape image, but the most interesting part about this is probably the cleaning process. Because in this image there are many objects which are kind of distracting and I do want to fix that by using a set of different tools in Photoshop. As always to follow along you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video and now let's begin. First the raw adjustments. Let's take a look at the histogram. You can see it's pretty well exposed. We have a lot of details in the shadows while not overexposing anything in the sky. But I do want to bring everything more in line by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral. Now we did get a little more details in the sky while also brightening up the whole shot. Overall we lost a bit of contrast but we are going to add that back manually. So now let's open up the basic panel. We can adjust the white balance first, so I'm going to bring up the temperature a notch. Just like that, getting some more natural colors to begin with. And then the most important thing for me is to get back all the details in the sky first. So I'm going to drop the highlights all the way down. And thus we can already spot those clouds up here. Next, I'm also going to further increase the blacks. This will lessen the contrast but also it will restore some more details in the darkest areas. And this way we just prepared the base raw file for the upcoming masking stuff. Before we jump into the masking however, let's add a little bit of texture and some clarity. Plus a little bit of vibrance for some stronger color tones. All right. Now that's the image after the base adjustments. Compared to before, we have lost some contrast but also gained a lot more details. Next up, let's work on the contrast by applying some masking. I am going to start with the sky. For that, I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm creating a rather big one like this. Covering most of the sky. And now let's just drop the exposure quite a bit. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to make the top part even more dramatic by adding some contrast. All right, and at this point I might want to adjust the size of this linear gradient a bit, but I think this looks pretty good. Then let's go ahead and add one more linear gradient to the sky right away. Again, just going to target the very top part here on which I do want to add some further contrast, which will just make the clouds look more interesting. Perfect. At the moment the sky looks pretty good, but we also need to focus on the foreground. So let's do create another linear gradient. And I'm just trying to cover most of the foreground like this. And again I'm dropping the exposure. Let's again drop it quite a bit and then adjust the size of the linear gradient until we get something that looks fine like this. I'm going to create yet another linear gradient for the foreground. Again, this time going with the smaller version. And instead of dropping the exposure, which would lead to some heavy underexposure, I'm going to drop the whites, which will make it darker, but without the risk of too much underexposure. Of course, we don't want the foreground to be too dark. So let's create a radial gradient and cover this bushy grass right there in the center of the foreground. And in here I'm just bringing up the exposure slightly. And at the same time I do want to bring up the texture and the clarity just to make this pop a little more. All right, perfect. Now it's time to add some bright spots and I do want to add them right there on the horizon. Therefore I'm going to use another radial gradient. Let's see, just like this going to overlap the hills in the foreground to add some kind of glow effect. And here I'm just bringing up the whites and the exposure a bit. Of course this could lead to some overexposure, but in those areas I don't really care about that. So let's create another one of these. I'm just going to add another radial gradient on the other side of the tree. Just like that. And thus we are getting some glowing spots right there in the center. We can enchant that some more using a bigger radial gradient. So covering the whole width of the image. 
And again, I'm bringing up the exposure for some more brightness. I'm also going to bring up the blacks, which adds a subtle glow. And then let's add some clarity to get a clear look. At this point, I do have the feeling the left side of the foreground might be a little too bright still. So I'm going to use another linear gradient, just like that maybe. And I'm going to further drop the exposure. Now, of course, this linear gradient is overlapping this hill. So let's just say subtract and choose a brush. Let's make the overlay visible. And then I'm just roughly brushing over that linear gradient to have a nice proper mask. Perfect. And finally, I do want to add one more linear gradient to the sky portion, just like that, and just introduce more contrast. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments. You can see that's a huge improvement to before. So let's continue by doing a little bit of color grading and I'm starting in the color mixer. First off, I'd like to bring down the yellow hue just to make the grass look a little fresher. Now I'm switching over to the saturation tab. Here I do want to bring down the blue saturation notch as well as the yellow tones. Maybe raise the green tones. And that's about it. For the split toning in the color grading panel, I'm going to work on the highlights. In this case, I'm going to actually apply a cold color tone to the highlights, which I very rarely do. But I think it looks good for this image. And let's bring up the saturation just a bit. And for the midtones, I'm going with the same hue. And a little more saturation this time. Perfect. Now we're almost done with the raw adjustments. There's just one more thing left to do and that's the sharpening in the detail step. So let's go in there, bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking and then of course increase the sharpening. And that's it for the raw adjustments. Now let's finish this image in Photoshop. As I said, the editing for this image is very interesting because of the cleaning part. And I want to start with that. First off, however, I'm going to duplicate that layer to have a backup just in case I mess something up. So I'm hitting Ctrl J. And now let's zoom in. First, I want to get rid of those trees on the right side. I can try use the content of your fills. I'm grabbing the lasso tool and I'm just creating a very rough selection here. Once I have that done, I'm hitting Shift F5 with the content of your selected. Hit OK. You will see this is not working that great. So instead of the content aware fill, I'm going to rely on the clone stem tool. And my plan here is to copy an area from somewhere around here, just on the edge between the hill and the sky. Hold on the Alt key and click in here. And with that selection, I am going to just continue up that hill by brushing in the copied area from before. Just try to get a natural look this way. I think that looks pretty good. Now, of course, there are some leftovers. Let's see if we can use the spot healing brush to fix that. Okay, looking much better already. Of course, there's still some leftovers. So again, make use of the clone stem tool. Trying to copy a clean area. And just get rid of everything that looks strange. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Then there are trees on the left side as well. I think for those I can use the spot healing brush, just roughly brushing over them. This is looking really good. And then comes the hardest part on the right side, right next to the tree. Let me first try it with the clone stamp tool. In this case, I do think I'm just brushing over this area with a simple color. So let's create a new layer. Grab the brush tool by pressing B. I'm making sure the brush is rather small. And I'm also going to set the hardness to around 100%. Of course, we need to adjust the brush opacity to 100%. And now I'm picking up a color from the sky from behind the trees. Then I'm just starting to brush over this hill. Trying to keep the natural edge of the hill, of course. Maybe switching up the color a bit so we get a natural look. 
Okay, I think this will work. Of course, this goes way beyond the normal editing I do, but I don't really care for removing elements like this. If you do, however, just don't do it. There are no rules to landscape photography and editing, so do whatever you want. Of course, it's getting a little trickier along those tree branches from coming down from the top. I just try to keep most of them, but just brushing roughly along those works pretty good as you can see. Okay, that looks pretty good. However, we can make this look more natural by copying clouds from other places. In this case, let's merge everything into a single layer by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Then I'm grabbing the clone stamp tool again and I do want to copy this little cloud right here so I'm holding down the Alt key and just click on it. And now I'm just placing it somewhere on the area where we just painted in. Let's repeat with a bigger cloud. Okay, I think that should be fine. Then there are a few other things I want to remove, just using the spot healing brush like this little tree on the right and this bush right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good already. Now let's add a little more contrast. I'm going to use a levels adjustment layer and here I'm making use of its layer mask. To add contrast, I want to burn certain areas. And to do that, I'm using the TK panel plugin, which allows me to target shadows and highlights. In this case, I want to make the shadows darker. So for this particular image, I'm going to hit the darks 4 button and apply this as a layer mask on the levels adjustment layer. Now, if I bring up the black point, you will see the shadows will get darker and thus we're getting more contrast. Just like that. And of course, here we will end up with underexposure. But again, this is not that important to the image, so I think it's okay. Maybe let's bring it down a notch though. Don't want the image to be too dark, but I think this looks great. Finally, we could add some more saturation, so I'm using a vibrance adjustment layer and just bring up the vibrance. And if you want to add a little more glow to the horizon, I suggest create a new layer. Here we are going to choose the hard light blending mode. Again, grab the brush tool. This time, make sure the brush opacity is set to something lower like 13%. And with a bright color and a soft, very soft brush, I'm going to paint in a little glow just here. All right, that looks great. And at this point, we are done with the post-processing. I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.